Valley Cooks coming to you live today from the Colored Valley Cook Kitchen. Now, I'm by myself today, so I will have to move the camera, but we are making a special treat, peppermint patties. Most everybody loves a York peppermint patty, so I'm sure you're going to love mine too. I actually use sweetened condensed milk in mine, and we're going to get started, and it should be pretty simple. I've got some water boiling over here on the stove top with some semi-sweet chocolate wafers in it to dip them in. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to put in four tablespoons of room temperature butter. We're going to get that in there. And a whole can, which is 14 ounces, of sweetened condensed milk. I'm going to bring y'all up close so you can watch. Because you're going to want to watch me roll these out as well and cut them out. Okay. You're going to put in the whole can of sweetened condensed milk. It looks good already, don't it? And now you're going to use corn syrup. And you're going to put in a third cup of corn syrup. This is just light corn syrup. And now we're just going to mix this up and start adding our powdered sugar. We're going to use three pounds of powdered sugar and some peppermint extract. Now, my little addition is going to be just a touch of butter extract. And now we're going to use some peppermint extract. We're going to start with a half teaspoon. Oh, well, for heaven's sakes, did you see me do that? That was pretty much a half teaspoon that's already in there. And it smells strong, so I'm putting this back in my thing. That's what happens when you're live. You can't fix your mess ups. But you're going to put peppermint in there to taste anyway. And once I add all the powdered sugar, we may have to add some more. Now we're going to start adding our powdered sugar a half cup at a time. We're going to use three pounds of it. Smells really good, y'all. Now, I was going to tell you guys something. Since this is live, I have to 
bring the camera up here and, and say something to you. When I was young, my mother catered weddings and she made butter mints for every wedding and she would put them in molds and then pop them out, you know, and they'd be different shapes and stuff. So this reminds me of my mama making these peppermint patties. Um, we always loved her mints, okay? And these are gonna be absolutely delicious because they're gonna be dipped in chocolate. <laughs> You're going to want to add enough powdered sugar until they get to be a stiff, um, until they're almost stiff. So it's going to take a while. brand milk in it, it's going to make it really good. I mean, it's stiff enough that you can roll it. I tasted it just if it's minty enough. And I think I'm going to add just a little bit more. see what I think about this. I think it's about perfect. Now, I don't know how many cups I put in there. We could go back and check it out if you want to. Um, but I think they're ready to roll. I do. And you can freeze this if you want to before you dip it. But since we're live today, we're probably going to dip it pretty quick. Matter of fact, I melted my chocolate over here and we need to go over here and check it out. And this is just the larger uh, Pyrex bowl that comes in the three-piece set that many of us have in our home. It fits right down in that green bean pot perfectly. We're going to use semi-sweet chocolate. We do not want cho milk chocolate. So I'm going to put a lid back on this. You put the lid on it, it helps it stay warm. And we're going to turn it up a little bit while we're rolling out our mints. Now, to roll out the mints, hope y'all are having fun. <laughs> I wish y'all could smell how good it smells. Okay, to roll out the mints, I've got my pastry board out. Um, and we're just going to put down some powdered sugar. I've got it in the sifter. And this makes a lot of mints. So I'm not going to make all these mints in front of you guys today for the sake of time. But you can see how it's looking. And if for any reason you want to put more powdered sugar in it, of course you can. We're going to, I'm going to just need a little bit of powdered sugar in it so that it's real workable on my board and it's not going to stick to it. And it's going to be easier to dip in my chocolate as well. And like I said, um, you can roll all of these and put them on a plate and freeze them if you want to. 
Now we're going to get out a rolling pin. And we're going to roll them until they're about an eighth inch thick. Isn't it fun to make your own candy at Christmas? It's one of the things I remember the most about my mother is her making candy. How exciting is it when you're a kid and your mother's making candy at Christmas? Now, I have my set of biscuit cutters that you can buy online. And in that set of biscuit cutters, you have two smaller round ones. And you can use them for your peppermint patties. I'm going to use the smallest one. For most of mine. And then you can always cut out some larger ones. But this is going to make a lot of mints. So just remember when you mix this up, if you want to save half of your powdered sugar, uh, not your powdered sugar, if you want to save half of that Eagle Bread milk and just make a half recipe, you're still going to have a lot of mints. And then you could mix a different flavor up with the rest of it, like maple or something like that. A different, use a different flavoring. How fun is that? All right. Now we're gonna pick up our insides pieces. Now we got beautiful little mints. We're gonna get them over here and dip them in chocolate. The chocolate should be getting warm. And like I said, for the sake of being live, I am going to go ahead and dip these. Now, if you freeze them, once they hit that chocolate, they're really gonna set up a lot quicker. But I just wanted to try to get some done and that way y'all have the recipe. Uh-oh, I stuck right there at the, in the middle. I didn't have enough powdered sugar on my board to not stick right there. Okay, so we're just going to, let me show you how you're gonna do it. You're gonna use a fork and you're gonna pick it up under, underneath it with a fork. So we're just gonna pick the mint up just like this with our fork and we're gonna dip it in the chocolate, okay? And we're gonna go over here and see how our chocolate's doing. I'm gonna turn it up a little bit. While we put these on a tray to get them ready to dip. That one's kind of thin. And the great thing about having this much um, mint, if you did roll some out a little bit, you think too thin, you don't have to use them. You can roll them back up and start over. But you want them to be thick enough that it's like a peppermint patty when you dip it. So some of mine are not as thin as other, I mean, too thin to me. And I'm not going to use them if they're too thin. We're going to go over here and get some dipped. Stir up our chocolate. And if you want to work with chocolate, it's so much easier if you um, put a little bit of shortening in it. Okay. Now, back in the day, people used paraffin wax, and some of you still do. But paraffin wax is really not supposed to be eaten. My mother never used it. She had a catering company and she used shortening. And so that's what I use. So I'm going to reach under here and get a little bit of shortening with a tablespoon. This is actually where I keep my shortening. Now, 
Now that's probably too much. We're just going to add a little bit and start stirring this up. Okay, you need to come on a little higher there. Now you don't want to put it too high. You don't want your glass to break. We were watching funny videos the other day, the funniest videos. And um, a lot of them were people using glass as bakeware in the oven. And they would turn the oven up over, uh, you know, the temperature too hot. And they would get their stuff out and it would break. And that was the... They kept breaking their pots and pans. Now I'm going to put it back down on simmer. And I'm going to just stir it. And that shortening is going to melt in there. And it's just going to make it a little bit thinner and easier to dip. And if you work with it over the heat like this, then you don't have to keep heating it up in the microwave. But that's why I'm doing it this way today. Because when you're going to dip a lot of candy... Like I was thinking about doing some peanut butter buckeyes as well. If you're going to dip a bunch of candy, it's nice to have it close by. Um, so I'm going to move it to here at this point. All right, I moved y'all over here. And now we're going to take one. And you can just coat it like this if you want to. Shake it. Put it on your paper best you can. There we go. I wish so much of the chocolate didn't have to come with it. Maybe we'll pass that one. That works better. You come off there, stinker. So see if you can't pat it a little. And the colder they are, the better. They're gonna work. And that's all there is to it. Let me get y'all down here so you can really see good. Let's do a thick one. I think the thicker they are, the easier they are to do. Because the thinner they are, they want to melt more. But if you keep them in the freezer a good hour, they're not going to try to do that. But because we're live... I can't put them on here that cold yet. But don't they look good? They look pretty. I know my kids will love them. They love peppermint patties. And then we're going to try to do one that's really big. Why don't y'all come up and watch me do it? He's big. There's a big one. All right, we're going to slide these in the freezer right quick. And we'll chat a minute, okay? Get these in the freezer. Y'all can see what a mess my house is behind me. Let me turn this back around. <laughs> no, it's mostly just groceries. A lot of groceries. All right. I'm going to slide these in the freezer. Yum. 
y'all get cold. Okay, we'll give them a minute to get cold. And I rolled some of these smaller ones. You can make, you know, like the thin mints that you get in a pack, the box of thin mints. You can roll them up in little bitty balls. There's so much of it. Roll some little tiny ones. And take your finger like that and smash it and make them that size if you want to. I'm going to be honest with you. I just like the mints. I like the mints better than I like the chocolate mints because I'm not a dark, dark chocolate fan. Uh, I could eat them all day long. They're so good. I think that's the best mint recipe ever that I've ever made. Y'all are going to love them. All right, here we have our mints. They've been in the freezer a few minutes. We're gonna take them off this, let's trim them. And we're gonna take them off. I prefer to trim them because it'll make them pretty. Now, if you wanted to, you could use the biscuit cutter you uh, made them with, but the problem with that is that it might Take off the entire side of chocolate. Well, I just messed that one up doing it that way. Just trim them around the edges like this. Now remember, your fingers are warm, so if you're going to pick these up, put them on a platter. You may want them to sit out for a little while before you transfer them over so that they've had time to come to room temperature. But I just want y'all to see how pretty they are. Homemade peppermint patties. They look good. Look at this big one. Uh-oh. Let me wipe my hands off. I don't want to mess him up. Well, doggone, I got my fingerprint in it. They're not really set up yet, y'all. I'm trying to do this too fast to get the video on today. They only been in there like five minutes. And they need to be in there at least an hour or so probably to completely set up. But I just want you to see how pretty they are. We're gonna cut one in half and let you see it. There you have it. Homemade peppermint patties. Awesome, right? So get out that mixer and mix you up some homemade peppermint patties. If you're a peppermint patty fan, you're going to love this recipe because I'm gonna tell you, you can't find a better filling mint recipe than this. I promise, I guarantee it, okay? So we will see you next time on Collard Valley Cooks. I'll get me a little bite for you. Mm, 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 mm. That's some good stuff. Make sure you use your favorite chocolate. And we'll see you next time on Collard Valley Cooks, where we're getting ready for Christmas, just like Mama did. <laughs>